In my conversations with world leaders, and I've spoken over 38, 40 of them now, I've made it known, I've made it known that America's back. And you know what they say? The comment I hear most of all from them? So they say, we see America's back, but for how long? But for how long? My fellow Americans, we have to show not just that we're back, but that we're back to stay, and that we aren't going to go alone. We're going to do it by leading with our allies. No one nation can deal with all the crises of our time, from terrorism to nuclear proliferation, mass migration, cybersecurity, climate change, as well as experiencing what we're experiencing now, the pandemics. There's no wall high enough to keep any virus out. And our own vaccine supply, as it grows to meet our needs, and we're meeting them, will become an arsenal for vaccines for other countries just as America is an arsenal for democracy for the world and, in consequence, influence the world. But every American will have access before that occurs. Every American will have access to be fully covered by COVID-19 from the vaccines we have. Look, the climate crisis is not our fight alone. It's a global fight. The United States accounts, as all of you know, less than 15 percent of carbon emissions. The rest of the world accounts for 85 percent. That's why I kept my commitment to rejoin the Paris Accord, because if we do everything perfectly, it's not going to only matter. I kept my commitment to convene a climate summit right here in America with all the major economies of the world, China, Russia, India, European Union, I said I'd do it in my first 100 days. I want to be very blunt about it. I had a, my attempt was to make sure that the world could see there was a consensus that we are at an inflection point in history. The consensus, consensus is if we act to save the planet, we can create millions of jobs and economic growth and opportunity to raise the standard of living of almost everyone around the world. If you watched any of it and you were all busy, I'm sure you didn't have much time. That's what virtually every nation said, even the ones that aren't doing their fair share. The investments I proposed tonight also advance the foreign policy, in my view, that benefits the middle class. That means making sure every nation plays by the same rules in the global economy, including China. My discussions — in my discussions with President Xi, I told him, we welcome the competition. We're not looking for conflict. But I made absolutely clear that we will defend America's interests across the board. America will stand up to unfair trade practices and undercut American workers and American industries, like subsidies from state to state-owned operations and enterprises, and the theft of American technology and intellectual property. I also told President Xi that we'll maintain a strong military presence in the Indo-Pacific, just as we do with NATO and Europe, not to start a conflict, but to prevent one. I told them what I said to many world leaders, that America will not back away from our commitments, our commitment to human rights and fundamental freedoms and to our alliances. And I pointed out to him, no responsible American president could remain silent when basic human rights are being so blatantly violated. An American president, president has to represent the essence of what our country stands for. America is an idea, the most unique idea in history. We are created, all of us, equal. It's who we are. And we cannot walk away from that principle and, in fact, say we're dealing with the American idea. With regard to Russia, I know it concerns some of you, but I made very clear to Putin 
And we're not going to seek excuse me, escalation. But their actions will have consequences. They turn out to be true, and they turned out to be true. So I responded directly and proportionally to Russia's interference in our elections and the cyber attacks on our government and our business. They did both of these things, and I told them we would respond, and we have. But we can also cooperate when it's our mutual interest. We did it when we extended the New START Treaty on nuclear arms, and we're working to do it on climate change. But he understands we will respond. On Iran and North Korea, nuclear programs that present serious threats to American security and the security of the world, we're going to be working closely with our allies to address the threats posed by both of these countries through, di through diplomacy as well as stern deterrence. And American leadership means ending the forever war in Afghanistan. We have We have, without hyperbole, the greatest fighting force in the history of the world. I'm the first president in 40 years and knows what it means to have a son serving in a war zone. Today, we have service members serving in the same war zone as their parents did. We have service members in Afghanistan who are not yet born on 9-11. The war in Afghanistan, as we remember the debates here, were never meant to be multi-generational undertakings of nation-building. We went to Afghanistan to get terrorists, the terrorists who attacked us on 9-11. And we said we would follow Osama bin Laden to the gates of hell to do it. If you've been in the upper Konar Valley, you've kind of seen the gates of hell. And we delivered justice to bin Laden. We degraded the terrorist threat of al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. And after 20 years of value, valor, and sacrifice, it's time to bring those troops home. Look.